this is Breakfast on GB News. And we're going through the papers now. A journalist and political consultant, Emma Burnell, alongside editor of Spiked, Tom Slater. Good morning to you both. Morning. Morning. Emma, let's have a look at the time, shall we? And the homes crisis could cost us the next election. This is from a Tory mayor. Yes, so the mayor of uh, the West Midlands, quite a big region, it was quite uh, a coup when he won this mayoralty. Um, I think Labour thought they were going to get it. So, And he's been... Um, there for quite some time now, mm. um, Andy Street. He is um, a big voice um, and probably on the more moderate wing of the Conservatives. But this is a, a row that is rumbling on and on because there are two very, very opposing sides on it. There are those MPs, particularly in the South East, the old school blue wall, as it's known, who really believe that any relaxation of planning rules um, will lead to them losing their seats because they're they are protecting their countryside, their more village-focused patches. And then other people who are saying, we absolutely have to build housing. This is existential for the Tories. If we don't increase people's ability to buy homes, i.e. have capital, there is no future for capitalism. Mm. <laughs> so it's very interesting that the, the mayor has said this. Um, you know, he's a big figure in the Tory party um, and that he's coming out so strongly and publicly in saying this is, is very interesting for those of us who are watching the Tory party with interest and to see which way they'll jump. Mm. I'm very much on Andy Street's side of the fence. I think we should be building a lot more housing. Mm. What do you reckon, Tom? No, I think he's completely right. I think this is an open sore for the Tories. And also, it's one of those issues where it's too late for them to do anything yeah. about it as well. I mean, the, the problem is, is that they could at least try and set a sort of direction of travel. But what we've seen in recent days is Michael Gove, the Housing Secretary's plans for things like abolishing leasehold, and oh. even, the, even the few things that he could do yeah. in the space that he's got... Um, Still, the pressure is there from those certain interests around the party um, to not go ahead with it. So it's it's obvious that this is going to be something which the you know, the age at which young people start to lean towards the Conservatives has been going up and up and up and up and up. And this isn't the only reason, but it's certainly a big it's powerful a big one. Part of it. Yeah, why they can't yeah. attract those votes. Um, talking of the Tory Party, the Sunday Telegraph is is quoting the Prime Minister saying, "I'll protect children from extreme gender views." Or yeah. extreme gender views? Well, it's essentially extreme gender views in sex education. So it's around the question of gender, identity, as well as um, sexuality in general. This has been a sort of running scandal or a concern, shall we say, in the UK for some time now. Um, and there is a particular kind of set of UN guidance, which is usually very influential on what the UK tends to do, um, which details of which have been spilling out. It suggests that even primary age people should be taught about sexual simulation. And then more on the gender side, it suggests that toddlers should be urged to reflect on, quote, their bodies and, quote, biological sex and gender. So very inappropriate, essentially. This isn't something that we've necessarily adopted, well, but it's, that that's age, the concern to push I mean, back against. But maybe it's a bit... It's a bit you know, we've got to be careful that we don't drag ourselves back down the, the 1980s yeah, pathway, haven't we? And what was it? Section 28. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah Section 28, but no, that, whatever that book was that would cause all the hoo-ha at the time, Sue lives with Peter and... Oh, Jenny, uh, and uh, Jenny has two mummies, I think, That's the yeah. sort of thing, or yeah. whatever it is. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, we, we've moved on. From... We've absolutely moved on from that. Um, look, I am a gender-critical feminist, but there are people out there who are trans, and they will be in the lives of young people. And there needs to be a sensible balancing of making sure that young people are aware of, of these people and their lives and, and the fact that there's nothing wrong with that, and also having age-appropriate yeah. um, talk discussions about their own bodies and their own relationships to their own bodies. Um, and I think that there are... There are ways we can go through this, but if this just becomes yet another um, cudgel for left and right to hit each other over the head with, the people who lose out are the vulnerable, both vulnerable children, vulnerable trans people, mm. uh, and vulnerable women. And so we've got to find a way through this that takes the heat out and just makes yeah. it more about light. Yeah. I think the extent to which it's a cudgel is because it has become a real issue. I think schools are going to be the next big battleground in the whole argument over gender, because you've seen in various different situations, taking a very kind of affirmative approach, i.e. a young person says, I think it might be trans, and then rather than treating that as the beginning of a discussion, it's the end of the discussion, yeah. suddenly, or even cases of parents not being aware that the school is referring to the child and using different names and pronouns and stuff, this sort of thing can't go on, and the longer that it does, the more... Um, parents are naturally going to be concerned. No, and then there are times when it is appropriate for a teacher not to tell a parent about something. That's usually when they're concerned about abuse happening mm. at home. 
there are real reasons why you do not teach your children to keep a secret from mum and dad. And uh, that, you know, because you can imagine all sorts of safeguarding yeah. issues around that. Mm. And so in general, that's not good practice. As I said, there are occasions when a teacher has to be a trusted friend so that they can talk about things happening at home. But that has to be that kind of exception rather than generating a culture where it is okay to keep secrets from Yeah, home. no, I'd agree with that. Yeah. I'd Emma, let, that. let's stay with you, shall we? A, a totally different story, though. The Northern Ireland Council election, Sinn Féin. Sinn Féin. has become the largest party now in Ulster. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in many ways, I think this just shows how far we've come in my lifetime. And I, I, you know, I, re I remember very clearly, um, I had a friend who was caught in the Harrods bombing in 1983. Um, her Christmas treat, um, getting taken up to the West End, ended with a broken leg. And now look at us. We've got... Um, um, parties who were once literally, um, you know, trying to kill each other, now fighting it out in a democratic mm. way, and Sinn Féin have won. What will be interesting to see is how the DUP respond to this, because so far they've been so intransigent and Stormont um, and being shut down as soon yeah, as... But what, uh, what's interesting, because it was seen as perhaps if the Alliance Party had done a bit better, mm. it would be seen as a big blow to the DUP, mm. and they'd say, well, obviously people aren't buying into your argument of staying away from Stormont. The DUP's actually done all right. They've done OK, but so they are... They have gone backwards. Yeah, um, the Alliance Party. I mean, we are still talking about a culture where it was t very much two sides. That the Alliance Party has about half of the seats of the DOP now. It's actually quite a big leap for them. So you you wouldn't expect something as a, a, a place as sectarian with such a sectarian history of Northern Ireland do this all in one go. Um, but it is interesting that the Alliance is coming through. Yeah. Mm. Uh, let's have a look at the old, um, no, what is it? Uh, Tom, the Express, Sunday Express. Um, we're going to look at the, uh, the the G7 summit. I mean, obviously, everyone's coming out and saying nice things about Ukraine mm -hmm. and Zelensky, understandably so. And, and, and actually, on things like, we are seeing movement, aren't we, on mm -hmm. things like F-16, on yeah. all these agreements that are mm -hmm. coming into place. No, definitely. So there's been a bit more action to back up the rhetoric, as you suggest. Um, not only has America signalled that they would be OK with various other countries sending F-16s and so on, um, opening up that conversation. There's also more talk about trying to close the loopholes in sanctions because there's been various different ways in which mm -hmm. Russian oligarchs have ma managed to um, get around all those kinds of things. A lot of super yachts parked in Turkey, as I understand it, and so on. So there's these different ways in which um, they're trying to close the net. Um, but the, the support, your support for Ukraine will never waver. I think I think the difficulty is that is at this point so much will hinge on what happens in this counter-offensive that we're all waiting for. It's arguably potentially already begun with what they call shaping operations, things already starting to take place. But so much hinges on if they can chalk up some wins, regain territory, and also it be seen to be such, you know, not be seen to be a disappointment in any sense. That so much of the ongoing support will hinge on that um, and I think that's what is essentially going to decide it but as you say at the moment certainly still a, a much firmer front than we might have seen even a few months ago yeah no, fair point. Tom Emma thank you both very much indeed good to see you this morning yes, thank really you. good to see you both always thank nice to celebrate much. on national tea day mm. mm. how do you like your tea both of you I, I don't drink it Me wow well, <laughs> you neither no. Get out of here. What's going on? Cancelled from GB News. No, but so cancelled. Because if you're a proper.